Shalom, shalom to all of you Hebrews and those of you that call on the Most High. That's right, the YHWH, the creator of the world, for all of your health and for your strength, as well as his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. I want to thank you, Torah, for stopping by for this training today. I'm going to get right to it. I want you all to know that it's important that we take the feast days that the Most High has provided for us through Scripture, that we take them seriously. This is a very, very important time in our lives. And right now we have some feast days that we need to make sure that we adhere to. The Most High has appointed us seven days that we are to recognize in a year's time. And he's given them to us because they're important that we, we do them. Because why? For one, they are a sign. That's right. The feast days and the Sabbath days are a sign. That's right. Between the Most High and the children of Israel, those that love him, those that call him by his name. That's right. It's a sign for us. So those of us that love him, we must realize that the feast days, and you can read about this in Ezekiel 20, 12. That's right. Ezekiel 20, 12 makes it very clear that moreover, I also gave them my what? My Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me is what the Most High tells us in Scripture. So I want you all to know that these feast days are important, but it's more important that you get them right. So today's teaching is going to be based on how to properly calculate the feast days, the Hebrew feast days, according to the lunar, the moon, the lunar moon cycle in the lunar moon system. And we're going to go over that today because the, I'm telling you something. These are days that are command, commanded by the Most High. That's right. These are not choice of days. We can't, we're not like Christians. We're not Christians. Christians are serving and worshiping days that are nowhere in scripture. This is fact. Thanksgiving, Easter. Christmas, none of those days are in your scripture. They're not. And for years, many of you have pledged and, and, and have, and all of us, including myself, for 45 years, I called myself a Christian. And I, too, serve these days. And now the being Hebrew, being awake, knowing the truth. That's right. I follow scripture. And when you follow scripture, none of those days that we've served as Christians are the days the Most High tells us to. And it's a reason. But you get to know the story. That's right. It's a story. And we must understand this story. And if you understand this story, you will understand the feast days that correlate with the story. So I want you to understand that if you don't do these things because they're commanded. That's right. Guarding the Sabbath day is a command by the Most High. That's right. It's a command. And I want you all to know that, that you cannot, you cannot say that you love the Father, but you don't follow his commands. There's no way you can do that. He says in scripture, and you can go to scripture, 1 John 2 and 4, it tells you that you are a liar. That's right. If he that say that I know him, that's right. If you say that I know him and you, and you do not, you do not keep his commands, you are a liar. The scripture makes it clear. So I'm asking you to please just take a little time with me today to learn how to calculate the feast days, the seven feast days he's given us according to the moon, the lunar cycle system. And we're going to learn how to do that today. So I want you all to join me in doing that. And again, this is going to be something that I want you all to know that it's in scripture. But the first thing we're going to do in learning this, we're going to first find out when we are supposed to start the count. That's right, because some people, some Hebrews, believe that you start at the crescent, the crescent. That's right, the little light crescent on the moon. They believe that that's when you first start the, the, the count of the new moon. That's not true, nor is it biblical. I want you to hear me. There are a lot of Hebrews that go off the crescent of the moon, but they can't show you that in Scripture. What I'm saying to you, no matter what, or who it is who's teaching you this Hebrew teachings, I want you to know, if they're not led by the Rahak Kadesh, they're going to misteach you. And that's what's happening in this case here. Because it's not in Scripture. I'm going to show you that the Scripture tells us what we should do. And the Scripture tells us, and you can go here, in Tilium 81, and you'll find it in your Bible under Psalms 81. Psalms 81, Tilium 81, if you have a Hebrew Besor that you read from. Psalms 81, 3 and 4 makes it very clear. Number 3, blow the ram's horn at the time of the what? The new moon. The new moon. It doesn't say crescent. It says the new moon. And watch this. It goes further. And in, in new moon, it says here, at the time 
at the full moon on our festival day. Number four, for this is a law for Israel and a right ruling of the Elohim of Jacob. Say it again. Number three, Psalms 81, three. Blow the ram's horn at the time of the new moon. So we're clear on that. We are to start the count at the new moon. That's when we blows the ram horn. In Hebrew, it's called the shofar. The shofar, we blow it when? New moon. And it's very clear. New moon. At the, well, also at the what? At the full moon. And those are two times. And I'll show you what this means in scripture. New moon at the full moon doesn't say anything about crescent so let's make that abundantly clear as we do this teaching and go further so please understand that okay now let's go let's do this i want to take you now to the calendar this calendar here is a calendar that's put out by a group called straightway ministry that's right by pastor dow pastor dow is a very good pastor hebrew pastor who i believe is led by the raha kadesh some of you may not believe or agree with his teachings uh, but he believes in the name of Yeshua. He calls him by his name. And he, he he and his church has done a phenomenal job at putting together this this calendar that has all the full moons and, and the new moon, the new moon information on it that makes it so much easier for myself and for those of us to call ourselves um, followers of the most high to teach this lunar moon system. They have it. And I want you to know here. And again, it's a it's a very good organization. And it's called Straightway. And you can you can go to my website. Go to my website and you can download this calendar yourself for free. And I want you, because we don't sell this information because it's very important. But I thought it was important that I not myself go and try to recreate this, this calendar. And I was going to do that. We were in the process of doing it ourselves here at this ministry. But after seeing Pastor Dow's uh, in Straightway's ministry's calendar that they've done, it's phenomenal. And because we're Hebrews and we're brothers, we're one in spirit. We need to work together. If he's done something, his ministry's done something, and it's anointed by the Father and it's accurate and it follows scripture, why would my church and why would I go and want to do it, recreate it again? No, we're going to take that time and put it in other research. And we're going to use the work and the material that Pastor Dow and his church has done. And they've done a beautiful job. So we're going to use theirs. And again, if you want to get a free PDF copy, download it today right now right now you can do that go to my website www.hebrewhelpinghandnetwork.live that's right www.hebrewhelpinghandnetwork.live and you can download it today go to our blog where it says the blog area and you'll see the, the photo of this um it'll be this photo right here that you can go to and you can see this photo that will be uh, up there you can download it It'd be a little download button you can push it and you can download the PDF version of this um, of the feast day that was put together by uh, Pastor Dow Straightways Ministry of Truth and it's a very very powerful uh, organization you can also find their link on my page I'm gonna have that on the page as well always so you can get a link from to their church and to their ministry from our page we're gonna partner with those ministries that call on the name that call on the father's true name and they call him by his sons, by his Kodesh name. That's important to us. And we're going to promote those. As long as you're Messianic. That's right. Messianic is important. What is Messianic? Messianic are those that follow Yeshua. That's right. Those that follow that you may call Jesus. We don't call him Jesus. That's not his name. That's the man-made name. That we don't use a transitive name. We use his actual Kodesh. Kodesh means what? Kodesh means set apart. We use his set apart name that the Most High gave to him and his son. He's jealous for his names. And so he called us for this day to stand on his name and stand on this word. That's why right. we come in spirit and in truth. And we're going to do it. So let's get to this teaching. But I want to show you this. This is very important. And you need to go download this if you don't have it. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, I want you to see that the Most High says in Scripture that we do what? We sound the shofar at when? The time of the new moon and the full moon. We're clear on that. So let's also, and again, this right here, this shows you what a new moon will look like on the calendar. And this here is what a full moon is going to look like. Okay. And whenever you see the elf in the middle, it, it represents the feast days. For those of you who don't have the calendar download, I'll show you this. Okay. So the, 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 what, what I want to show you right now, I want to go to one of the scriptures. And we're going to go, the scripture we're going to go to first is I want you to go to um, 
Shemot. Shemot. Shemot is Hebrew for Exodus. Exodus 12, 1. That's right. Exodus 12, 1. Exodus 12, 1. It's called Shemot in Hebrew. Okay, we're going to pull that up. So I want you guys to see this. This is very important. We're going to, we're going to follow scripture. We're not going to make this a long teaching, but I want you to see exactly how to calculate it so that you will know from this point forward how to calculate it. Let's read. We're going to start in Shemot, which is Exodus 12, 1 through 6. Exodus 12, 1 through 6. And we're going to start by reading number 12. And it says here, And Yah spoke to Moshe. Moshe means Moses. Moshe is Moses. That's the English word Moses, but Moshe is the Hebrew word for that. Moshe, Moshe. And to Aaron, in the land of what? Mizraim. Mizraim represents Egypt. Whenever you see Mizraim, Mizraim means Egypt, means place of bondage. Mizraim. Mizraim. You'll see that a lot when you read from a Basora, which is what I read from, which is a one generation removed from the actual Torah. And we love it. It's wonderful. It keeps the father's name and the son name intact. And this is what I mean right here. This is the father's name. That's right. The name that we're going to do a teaching on that as well this week. And we're going to show you his real name that he, he left on the Dead Sea Scrolls as, as well as in, uh, you guys got to excuse me here, a website. And one goes to a website, they, uh, they pull this up. So I want you guys to know that. So we have a lot of people coming online there. So that's a good thing. Okay, good. Okay. So I want you guys to see this. And I want to start reading here at number 12. And Yah spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Mizraim, saying, Number two, this month is the beginning months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. Again, number two, this month is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. Number three, speak, all, speak to all the congregations of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of of his fathers, a lamb for a household. Number four, and if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it, uh, take it according to the number of the beans. Which means if you have a lamb that you're preparing for your home and you have two people, three people in your home and the lamb that you're preparing is a lot more, it feeds more than the three people in your home, it says go to your neighbor who may be preparing for the same dinner and you guys work together, so to speak. Guess right. You find out how many people he has in their house and they have in your house and you come together collectively with the number and you prepare a lamb t together. This is what the father is telling us in scripture. And this is very important that you understand the most high. When we do these feasts, these feasts, we, we work together to make it happen. And he's telling us this in scripture. And number three, again, speak to all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th day, remember now the 10th day, Tenth day of this month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Number four, and if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beans, according to each man needs. Each man's need, you make your account for the lamb. Number five, let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old male, Take it from the sheep or from the goats. Number six, and you shall keep it until when? The 14th day of the same month, which is what? The first month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between evening to evening. Here it says evening right here. And it's very important because in Hebrew, our evenings or our days start from six o'clock or sundown around six, seven-ish, sundown to sundown the next day. That's when the day is called evening to evening. You'll find it through scripture, but this is one of them you'll see here where it says from evenings. And I'll show you in scripture and other portions where we'll say evening to evening. And, I'll, and I can prove this because in those days, they their days didn't start like ours did. Ours start at 12 o'clock a.m. at 12 o'clock when it's night. Their start when it gets dark, that's night. That's another day. And we can prove that through scripture, but that's not the teaching for the day. So I'm going to move past that, but I want you to see that. And it says for the evening. Now, what's more important, let's go to the calendar because it's important that you understand that this is the first month. Now, we have the first. Now, we had last year, we had several people say no Kohen for this year in 2016. This is, a 20, this is April 2016. Typically, typically Passover is going to happen around in, in March. At the time of a beep, which is when the, the, the when the the ripeness of the, it gets green, 
and, and the barley, it gets green. Instead of the ripeness, it's a greenness to it. It's a way that they can tell. And it's called a bead. And that's typically in the month of March. Now, we even had, I even had some members who go to my synagogue who, who were confused with this from other teachers and other Kohens that did not know and do not know. They just listen to other people and they follow what's happening over in Israel. And they're not right in Israel. They, they became right this year for the first time. They've been wrong every year until this year they follow the system, the lunar system that is the actual way to follow the feast. That's right, the yearly seven feasts, not the weekly feast. The Most High created the weekly feast when he created the earth in the beginning of time. You'll find that in Genesis. And all throughout scripture, what you'll find on the weekly feast, the seven day feast, through scripture, it makes it clear, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 14, that's right, Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 14, makes it clear, six days, that's right, six days you are to work, do all your work, the seventh day is the Sabbath day, right there is when the Most High created the seven day, that's what a week was, he created it in the beginning of time, what a week was to be, seven day, and the seventh day is the what, Sabbath day of rest. The Most High created. That's the day he rested from all of his work when he created this earth. When he created the heavens and earth, he rested on the seventh day. So there's no reason to have a count a moon for seven days. Because why? After the seventh day, it starts all over again. All over again. So when the Most High created it originally, he created what a week would be. That's why in scripture, in Hebrew, we have what they call the booths of what? Weeks. That's right. And we'll get to that in the teaching as well. But I want you all to know the Most High created the seven day week. There's no reason to use the lunar cycle for that. And the difference is, and you'll see this when you do the research, you will find, you will find that the way that you know that is true is that whatever the Most High wants you to follow the lunar system, he gives you a specific day. That's right. He'll give you a month and he'll give you a day. That tells you right there to follow the lunar system all by itself. And you'll find that throughout the scripture. I'm going to show you several today, but I want you to know this. You don't need, you don't need no moon to know the seven day cycle. It's the most high created it way back in Genesis. I want you to go do the research for yourself. And you'll see throughout scripture in the Old Testament, as well as in the New Testament, you will find whenever the most high spoke about said anything about the seven day sabbath he always said this six days you work seventh day is the seventh day New visitor. this is what the scripture says so i want you guys to understand that whenever you guys hear that that's my website it tells me that someone's on our website so i want you to know when you hear new visitor that's what that means but anyway um so this is a good thing. So I want you guys to get this. It's a very important teaching because there's a lot of false teaching out here about the seven day Sabbath. They think you're supposed to use a moon for that. That's not true. That's just not true. That's not true. And that's nowhere in scripture. What you'll find in scripture, six days you work, seventh day is a Sabbath day. Why? Because the Most High created and established the seven day Sabbath in the beginning when he created the world. That's right. He tells you the day to day how he did it. And he never gives a day like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He doesn't do that. What he does, it says yam, 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 yam means what? Day, day one, day two, day three. That's how he speaks. He never, ever said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Not at all. The Most High always, when he created the days, it was day one, day two, day three. And he makes it clear in scripture. Six days you work, seven day is a Sabbath. Income. And that's... And that's why we can do that. It's very important. Okay, so with that being said, I want you guys to understand that this is a very important. Um, we've established the new moon. Don't forget, new moon starts when? At the start of the new moon, then you have it. I want you to know that the, 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 new, the new year or the new moon st starts at the new moon. And this right here is the new moon. Now, this is April. Now, we're going to test a theory. This is a theory. We're going to test it here real quick. I want you to see this. Look at this. People said it was in March. This is March. No, it's February. Okay, we're gonna go to March. I want you to see March. This is March, and people said that the new uh, that they said this year right here. This is March, March 2016. There was people who said that the Passover was supposed to be on the 21st of March of this year. Not right. They're not right at all. I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna show you this through Scripture. The Scripture tells us the first day. That's right. The first day, right here. But this says 13 because it was what leap year this year. It was called Adar. 
got to do the research on that. Go do some research and Google up a DAR, and they'll tell you about that. But right now, I got to move forward. But watch this. Now, we're going to test that theory. They said it was in March. We're going to prove that it wasn't in March. Don't forget, 10th day, we're supposed to go out, gather the lamb. The 14th day is the Passover. Don't forget right here, which is new moon. We're going to start counting right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten will be the 17th. 14th day is supposed to be Passover. Okay, 17 is the 10th day. That's the day we're supposed to go out and gather the lamb and get it together. Get ready for the Passover and keep it in our home. Why? Because the goal was to get used to the animal. So on the fourth day, when you they slaughter the animal, people cared about the animal. The kids would love it. They would all oh, they would feel bad about it because they kept it in their home for four days. So they would have some kind of compassion for it. So on the fourteenth day, Passover, they slaughter the lamb. Then they would be then have a feast. Now this seventeenth is the tenth day when you go get the lamb. Let's finish counting. Eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth. Oh boy, right there, twenty-first. The 21st, hmm, sound the alarm. First of all, liquid day is on. Nope, it's on a Monday, which is called Yan Shani, a Monday. Look at this, not even Sabbath. And they said, there's some that said Sabbath day was the March 21st, 22nd this year. Not true, not true, not according to scripture. The 14th day, that's right, is supposed to be Passover. The 14th day of the first month. First of all, this is the 13th month. So, okay. Okay, I'm going to have to get back with that. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, and we have, um, we also have, don't forget, so we have the new moon here, and we're going to count down, which left hit the 17th for the 10th day. And then four days after the 10th day, one, two, three, four, which puts you the 14th day. That right there lets you know that it could not have been. It could not have been in March. Now, let's go to April. Let's test the same theory. Because don't forget, it's going to line up with the moon. It's going to line up with the, the lunar system, if it's right. Keep in mind, the lunar system, now, in in April of this year, don't forget, we do not use Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar you use every day. We don't use that in Hebrew. We use the lunar calendar, because it's called the Most High's calendar. That's right. It's, it's something called the Hebrew calendar. But it's the calendar you want to use, because it's lunar. It's based on a lunar moon. Now, the Jews may use something a little different. You don't go off the Jewish calendar. You go off the lunar. The lunar is the only thing that's been around back then, and it's the same lunar system to this day. The only thing that's consistent. The only thing. Everything else is off. So I want you to know this does not lie. This is why this is what you have to use for the feast days. Now let's look at this. In in April, the first day of the month for Hebrews, for the first day of the month, for the first month was in April, right here. And actually, don't forget, you see when it starts right here? Evening. This right here represents, whenever you see this line right here, it represents the evening start right here. The evening. That's why it has it right here. It's the latter part of that day. Now, the new moon is on what? The 8th. So let's start counting. Because when did the horn say? Sound the ram's horn. When? At the time of what? The new moon. Okay, at the new moon. Okay, so let's go back here. So right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the seventeenth, on the seventeenth is number ten. That's when you get what? You get the lamb ready. You gather the lamb, get it ready. You put it in your house for four days. And on the fourteenth day, we're going to slaughter the kill the lamb. Now watch. Look at this. This is the tenth, seventeenth, right here. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, which is what? The 24th, which is what? Evening starts right here. Passover. And guess what you see right there? Oh, what do you see? Right there. Full moon. When does the Father tell us to sound the ram's horn? At the sound of the new moon. Bingo. In the full moon. This is Passover right here. 
Bingo. Passover starts on the 22nd. This year was April 22nd. And then where do you have here? 23rd, which is the same Passover. Goes right into Unleavened Bread. Starts right here. Unleavened Bread starts on that. Don't forget, we start our day right here. Our new day starts here. So the new day started on the 21st, 22nd. Some of you know, some go both right here. Because this, this right here is your full moon. The new moon and your full moon. The 14th, don't forget, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, Passover. Fact. I want you guys to see that for yourself. That's very important right there. Passover. Now look at this. It's important that we understand that it tells you right here. And you shall keep it until what? The 14th day of the same month. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel should kill it between the what? Evenings. That's very, very important. Now watch this. I want to go, just go to another one. Let's go to Leviticus. I'm going to go to Leviticus. We're going to show something else. Leviticus 23, 5 and 6. Leviticus 23, 5 and 6. Okay. This is Leviticus right here, five and six. Now, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between evening is the Passover to Yah, right here. And number six, and on the 15th day of this, of this month is the festival of unleavened bread to Yah. Seven days you eat unleavened bread and look what you have here, right here. It makes it very clear, right here. Right here. Here's Passover and here's the unleavened bread. Starts right here on Passover. Next day at the Passover, here's unleavened bread. Seven days. And the seven days starts from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and here's seven. Ends right there before you go to the next day. All scripture all scripture and i want you to see that so i want you to understand that the most high has made it clear in scripture what we are to do he's given us clear instructions in the first month on the 14th day of the of the month between the evening is to pass over to yah passover is a very important very important feast day why because it's the day that the most high brought the children of israel our ancestors out of misery out of egypt that's very important for us to all to understand that. Okay, now let's go. I want to take you to another one real quickly. Let's go to number three. Number three, I'm going to take you to 23, Leviticus 23, 23. Leviticus 23, 23 through 32. Leviticus 23, 23 through 32. I want you to go there, please. Now watch this. We'll start reading here at 23. And Yah spoke to Moshe. Number 24, speak to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest. Listen to that. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing of trumpets, a set-apart gathering. Now watch this. We're going to take you there. I just want to show you how, when, when you do lunar, Every, and especially, especially, you have to go download this calendar off our website. You have to, because it's critical to have this. this you have to have this, this, this calendar to get this lunar, because this calendar includes the new moon and the full moon every month for all your months. And it's very important for you to have this calendar. Okay, now we're at September. We're in September right now. The day is September the 16th. Okay, and again, September 2016. Don't forget, new moon's dark. Full moon is the, the white, the white here. Okay, as you will see for this month that we're in right now, it happened, the new moon happened on the exact first day of the month. It lined up perfectly with the Gregorian calendar. Very interesting. It doesn't always do that as you guys seen in the past teaching. It doesn't always do that every month. It does this month. Now watch this. As you see here, first day of the sixth month. This is the sixth month for the Hebrews. This is our sixth month this month. Now, it's about to get very critical for us because always remember when you're dealing with Hebrew, seven is the most high. Two and seven are the most high's favorite numbers. He loves two and seven. Seven represents 
completion. Two represents the law. That's right, the law of life, the law of scripture. It's the law. Two. Old Testament, New Testament. That's right. Old Testament, New Testament. It's your law. Everything in life is based on a law. Male, female, positive, negative. It's a law. And the Most High created that law that can't be broke by no one. That's why can't no one have a child unless you have two. What? Male and female. Period. Your car won't start unless your battery. I don't care how beautiful your car is, how expensive it is. Without the positive and negative working, take that negative or that positive off, you won't start that car. I promise you, you won't. It can run without one of them, but you can't start it without both of them. Only. You have to have that what? Positive and negative energy. It's law. Two. Seven. Completion. That's why when he completed a week, when he made it the, the week, he completed it. What a seven-day week would look like. The Most High done that. So the Most High is very clever and very beautiful in what he's done for us. And it's very systematic and it's forever. It's Kodesh. He made it. Kodesh means what? Kodesh means set apart. And when it's set apart, it can't be touched. Period. Now watch this. Now we're in the sixth month. As you can see here, this is when you count. Now there's no feast dates for this month. We're getting ready for next month. Which is, a, uh, which is the month where we have to atone for all of our sins. And I'm asking all of you right now, that's listening to me right now, next month, I ask you to join us and join this ministry in our atoning process. If there, this may be our last chance to hit our knees and to go to our Father and pray and ask for forgiveness for everything we've done. If there's someone we've hurt, if there's someone we offended, if there's someone that, that we to this day have not spoke to, we need to get all of this out of our system. This may be our last opportunity to do so. So I'm asking all of you that follows these teachings that you please hear me and join us for next month's atonement that is going to happen. And it's an appointed time of our life. Now, you see here on the screen right here, the feast days. Now, that's going to be the last day of the month. That's right. The last day of the month, as you can see here, last day of the month. Which would be the first day of the month for, for October. Right here. Friday. Friday. It's the 30th. Right here, the 30th is actually the day that we start our next feast day. And it's a feast day of trumpets, okay? And it's when you blow the horn. This is why I'm sounding it off right now. This is why I'm, I'm coming to you guys right now because this is so important to the Most High. And a lot of you may not have had this teaching, but I have to give it to you because you have to understand the lunar system. And which is what you want to do for this one here. And I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Look at this. Day of Atonement. Now watch this. It said, what? Ten days. 10 days, it says blow the ram's horn when at the sound of the new moon and the full moon. Here's the new moon. Let's count. We'll start counting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And see, this is why I did it on this day here. You see that? It came on the day of atonement right there. But watch this. That's because I styled it what? right on this day but when does the scripture tells us started it says start the counting at the site of the new moon well the site of the new moon ain't the first the site of the new moon is the 30th actually right here right here and if you go back you go back a little bit to to, to, to see this is october as you can see this is october's calendar but let's go back to september's end of september real quickly look at that right there there it is Feast of Trumpets, right there, which is on the 30th. See, it's right there on that 30th, the day when we're going out to the new day of the 1st. That's when we see the new moon right here. So technically, technically, when you're counting the new moon, don't forget the scripture says, sound the ram. So on where? Let's look at that. This is real quickly. That's 77. The new, the new moon is Tillium. Tillium is 177, 770. Right here. Psalms 81 says what? Blow the ram's horn at the time of what? The new moon. At the full moon. On our festival day. Okay, let's go back. Right here. At the new moon. On our festival day. Right here. Send scripture. Right here. Bingo. First day. Right here. This is the 30th, actually, into the first day, right here. So, we're going to count 10 days into the atonement. So, we start counting at the site of the new moon. So, the new moon was here. So, we count this as one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth day will end on a Saturday, which is another Sabbath day. And the Day of Atonement will begin the next day, right here, on the ninth. Ten, right here, number ten. Number ten, the tenth day, right here. This is the tenth day, which is the ninth day on the Gregorian calendar, but it's the tenth day on the lunar calendar. And you got to hear one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's your ten. Bingo. And the day starts when? It starts in the evening. And that's why you see right here, right here where that line is up there. That's why you see that starts right here because our day starts in the evening to evening is when it starts. Now let's go back to scripture. That's right. Let's go to scripture. Scripture always in the scripture never lie. Never has. Never will. Man lies. Scripture doesn't. We're the one that lean to our own understanding. Most high makes it very clear in scripture what he wants from us. Look at this. 23. And Yah spoke to Moshe. 24. Speak to the children of Israel saying in the seventh month on the first day of the month you have a rest right here seventh month on the first day right here what day is that bingo saturday which is what the day of rest the day of rest lines up with scripture all the way with scripture what i'm showing you is something your pastor your teacher or your christian pastor is not going to show you not even some of your hebrews have taught this you go and you fight and we fight with each other so much on facebook but we don't teach what you're going to get here at this ministry here you're going to get teaching because we don't have very much time the most high is very clear what he expects from us these feast days are important they're a sign between us and the father we got to get this right we cannot make up make no more mistakes i'm here to teach you i'm here to give you and it's not me teaching you reference Fleming please let's make that clear it's not the rebel Israel teaching you it's the Rahaka dash to set up our spirit that's in me teaching you that's our teacher that's our Shomer that's right in Hebrew it's called Shomer which means what our helper our comforter our teacher that's right it's not me the person take me out of the equation it's the spirit that's in me that's teaching you. That's what taught me. The Rahaka Desh taught this to me. No man taught this to me. It was the Rahaka Desh. It was just a man confirmed with why the things that the like straightway ministry is done with this beautiful calendar and it helps out. That's why we have to do our job as Kohens, as leaders, to put out the information so those that are searching, so those that are looking can find it, can find truth. As opposed to all these lies and people's opinion as we lean to our own understanding, some of us, as we determine and we try to decipher the scripture. It's very important that we handle the scripture properly, the old as well as the new. There's nowhere in scripture where it tells you to go to the moon for the seven day Sabbath. Nowhere does it tell you that. Nowhere. What you will find in scripture, throughout scripture, the old as well as the new, where it tells you, it tells you what? It tells you to make sure that you utilize both the old and new. Why? To have that balance. It tells you six days that you work, seventh day Sabbath. The most high established the seven days way in the beginning when he created the earth. That's he, because all you have to do after you go six days, go your seventh day then guess what it starts all over again why do you need a calendar to restart it once you get it set one time it goes on and on and on there's no need for a calendar what you will learn what you will learn and what you will discover keep this in mind please that when the most high wants you to use lunar he will give you the month in a pacific day this is what you're going to learn when you do the research that when it comes to the feast days, the Most High gives you a day and a Pacific month. Why? He's telling you, go to the moon. Go to the moon. Because why? The moon tells you the month and it helps describe the day. That's what you need. You can't get the day without the month. So you need to be able to get the right month. And when you get the wrong month, this test it. This test it. How do you test it? You test it by going to the calendar and starting off when? At the sound of the new moon. And it says it in scripture right here. And you begin to count. Ten days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There you go. 
You can do this in every single month. Whatever the scripture tells you, then you go to the month and this is how you find it. Go to our webpage. Download this copy today. Download your own copy for your computers, for your research, for your, it's wonderful. Or you can go to the link to Straightway Ministries and get it from there with Pastor Dow. He's a wonderful man and doing a wonderful thing. He's anointed by the Most High, followed, led by the Lord Hawker Dash. And I want you guys to know that you must look for that in any pastor that you follow because the Rahaka Dash is our teacher. He's, the Rahaka Dash is all of our teacher. No man, no one man teaches no other man. It's the Rahaka Desh these days It's going to do it. If you don't have the Rahaka Desh, you don't know the Father, not the true Father. You can't know him without the Rahaka Desh, the set-apart spirit. That's right, that lives what? In you. As John 3.3 3 says, we must be what? Born from above. That's right. You must be born from above to receive salvation. I don't care who you are. It's not about skin color. That's right. It's about being born from above and having the spirit of the most high in you. If you receive that spirit and you follow his laws and his commands, he's not playing with us. These are commands. That's right. The Sabbath days are commands. The fourth commandment tells us that. So guard the Sabbath day and keep it Kodesh. Kodesh means what? Kodesh means set apart from all other days. The day of atonement is coming. That's right. October October the 10th, the Day of Atonement. Please take off work. Join me as we pray to the Father. This may be our last time. I want to say to you all, I thank you, Torah, for coming by and for this teaching. Thank you so much. Continue to follow the commands of the Most High, YHWH, the Creator of the world, and His only Son, Yahshua HaMashiach. I love you all. Continue to follow the teachings. Go to the website, www. Hebrew Helping Hand Network Live today and subscribe to this YouTube channel, please. Shabbat Shalom.